What is going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Clams. I'm Will and I am here on Long Island. It is fall. It is very breezy. Hopefully the camera's not picking that up too much. But, alright, if you were watching last week, you saw what we caught. And that is this. A very nice sized East Coast bluefish. Now, I'm gonna utilize the whole fish. So, real quick, actually, um, you're allowed, I the, the guy I was with kept saying you're only allowed two. When I look up regulations, you're allowed three. Doesn't matter to me, we only kept one. But I took it, cleaned it out, cleaned out the gills. Um, this is, not a frowned upon fish, I wouldn't say that, but it's not a widely sought out fish. Um, people tend to say, oh, it's too oily, it's disgusting. Now, if you get a blue fish, you let it sit, and the thing is that they fight. They fight so hard, and when they fight like that, they end up building up a lot of lactic acid and getting the blood pumping. So when you land them, if you don't bleed them right away, that blood spreads, and it does give them a very oily taste, which I like. But what we're gonna use in today's episode is just the collars, the head, and the tail. And we're gonna do something that I think is kinda of cool. So let's cut those off now. Okay, so one of my favorite soups in the whole world is French onion soup. If you've never had French onion soup, it is a really rich, deep beef stock, caramelized onions, and then they put it in a crock pot, put a nice fat piece of bread on it, and grate Gruyere cheese, and then broil that. It is in the top three. Uh, obviously, number one is clam chowder, but it's in the top three, for sure. Um, because we got a little bit of colder weather, I'm gonna take our fish heads, fish collar, fish tail, make a really deep, rich stock, and we're gonna make fish onion soup. Now for our stock, really simple. We're just gonna use carrots, celery, bay leaves, garlic, and two onions in our fish head. Now, if you're familiar with the channel, you know a lot of times in stock, I leave the skins on. That'll actually add another depth of flavor and uh, darken up our broth a little bit. But no reason to get rid of those skins. The only thing is to cut off the uh, bottoms here because that can have a little bit of dirt in it. So get rid of that. And then same thing with the uh, garlic. Now these already have the roots removed. So all we're gonna do is cut that entire head in half, leave the skins on, and that's gonna go into our pot just like that. All right, heating my pot up, and I'm gonna add things even before it is hot, just to get it going here. Now normally, when I'm making a stock, I don't want the veggies to take on any color. I just sweat them down and I want it to be a nice clear broth. This, I want a really deep, rich taste to it. So we are going to caramelize these just a little bit. Going to add a little bit of black peppercorns. Some sea salt, get things moving. Just a touch of water. Okay. 
We're gonna give that a couple of more minutes so that water burns off and caramelizes just a touch more. Okay, so while this is cooking down, what I'm actually gonna do is move my fish head collar and tail to a pan and I'm going to broil it just real quick just to get some color on it. So I have this set, I have the oven beneath me set to 550 and we're just gonna throw this in while this is browning. And what that'll do is again, a little bit of caramelization and that'll add more depth of flavor because we're really trying to mimic a beef stock but using only a fish head. My veg has a nice color to it. And the real trick is that you don't want to burn anything because that'll lend a bitter flavor. Now we'll take the fish out. Oh yeah. In we go. Oh, that is a beautiful, beautiful thing. All right. Now we add water. And now I don't have to salt this stock again because when I caramelize the onions and we add the stock, we're gonna be salting and seasoning that as well. So this, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna add one more uh, quart of water. Is that a quart? I don't know, something like that. But I'm gonna bring it up just so it's covering that head just a little bit. I'm gonna bring this up to a boil. And then once that comes up to a boil, we'll turn it down to a simmer and let it go for about two hours already. That broth is a nice rich color. This is gonna be good. So another very important thing to making stocks is this right here. So what this is, the protein is coagulating and they call it the scuzz. It is what will make your stock cloudy. So as this is rolling and simmering, every once in a while, check on it and scoop this out. It's very important and it'll elevate your stock. All right, we got a very, very gentle simmer going. Throw the lid on. And now we are gonna come back in two hours. In that time though, I'm gonna prep the onions and get those ready for the soup. All right, it's been about Two and a half hours, the stock has been simmering. I've been scooping the scuzz off the top. It's a beautiful golden brown. So we're gonna bring it over here and strain everything out. That is the deep brown color I wanted. I am very, very, excited about that. So I've got medium heat here. I got my carry gold. I would say about half a stick in there. All right, once that starts get, getting going, now we add all of our onions that we chopped. And you want to do this on a lower heat. You want to very co slowly cook down the onions, slowly caramelize them. And it takes a while. You got to keep stirring and keep them moving so that they don't burn. And I used a sweet onion to combat the richness of the broth and the cheese to kind of cut through but because it is a sweet onion, it has a higher sugar content and is more likely to burn. So we're gonna be real careful with these onions. Okay, a little bit of sea salt. And this can take, depending on how much onions you have in here, 
These can take up to, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes maybe. So we will check back in once these start taking on a little bit of color. All right, our onions have started to take on some color. And yes, that took a very long time. <laughs> but you see how much that cooked down? I mean, compared to what we have, I almost, I left one of the onions out and I almost wish I put everything I had in there, but that's looking good. Now, what I'm going to deglaze the onions with, and that's to get all the little brown bits off the bottom of the pan there, is right here I have uh, dry sherry. You could use marsala, you could use... Uh, I forget what the other one's called, but dark vermouth would even work, but the sherry is the French way. So, and this, I'm not adding too much, maybe. Mmm. The smell of that coming off is absolutely, absolutely incredible. So I'm going to get everything off the bottom. And I'm going to wait until I don't smell any alcohol coming off, that the alcohol is completely cooked off. I don't know if you guys can really get a good look in there, but it's a nice light brown color. And now I have my stock over here, and I'm going to add that just a couple of ladles at a time. And by adding it just a couple of ladles at a time, it actually is emulsifying with the butter. And it's going to make it a bit more thick. Now some people put a little bit of cornstarch in their uh, French onion soup or flour. I'm going to leave it out. The smell coming off of this is absolutely divine. Between the sherry and just that little bit of butter. This stock smells amazing. <laughs> now, I'm going to keep adding the stock to this. Once it's all incorporated, I'm going to bring this up to a boil. Then when it's on a boil, I'm going to shut it off, let it sit, and this is ready to go. Now that this is up to a boil, I am going to do a little bit of a taste just to see, just to see if we need any seasoning whatsoever. And most likely burn my mouth. Nope, that is perfect. So I'm going to shut this off, put it aside, and now we'll get our crock pots ready. Okay, so now to prep our crock pot, definitely put it on a pan because the cheese is going to, uh, going to melt. We're going to fill it up almost to the top here. And now I have a uh, piece of bread that I lightly toasted, obviously French bread, because it's French onion soup. But we will put that in. You don't necessarily want that to sink, because that is what's going to hold our cheese up. So what I have here is Gruyere. You could use Swiss cheese, um, but... Most uh, recipes are going to call for Gruyere. And don't be shy. All right, now I have my broiler set, and this is going into the oven. So it shouldn't take too long. I'm going to check on it in about a minute. You just want that cheese nice and browned on top. That's it. And then pull it out, let it cool down, and we'll sit down and eat. All right, I'm digging in. The best part, so normally 
they load the cheese around the sides so that it kind of burns on the sides and that's one of the best parts but oh man I'm excited That sweetness of the onions cuts through. Honestly, that's not fishy at all. I wouldn't know that that's fish broth in there. And it just shows you how versatile, like just because you use fish heads and collars and whatever to make broth, it doesn't have to be a fish soup. You know, you can do a lot of things with fish stock, but this is, this is pretty good. So I'm gonna wait. My mom's coming home in a little while. She made one of the best, best French onion soups I've ever had in my life. I'm gonna make her one of these and we'll see what she thinks if it passes the mama clams test. I'm willing to bet that it will. Man, that's really, really good. And again, anyone out there that says that they don't like bluefish, you're crazy. You're just not using them right. That's all that it is. I could feed this to someone and then later tell them that it was bluefish. I think it would blow their mind. So again, keep your mind open to what you can do. If you had something you didn't, didn't like it, try it again. All right, we'll meet back here when my mom gets home. Looks so pretty. <laughs> all right, I think I just have cheese and broth here but I see the steam coming up from it <laughs> so it's gonna be a while before I can put it in my mouth before I think. you get to the, the onions maybe mm. for some reason I want to say it tastes beefy Yes. <laughs> that, and, yeah. Yeah, but the fact that it's bluefish. Yeah. Is throwing me off. So there's I a guess. lot of a lot of tricks you can do. So mm -hmm. one of the things I did was broil the head and the collars to burn them. Okay. And now I didn't burn the veg. I browned the veg, mm -hmm. but I burnt the collars to give it a little bit more umami flavor, a little more oomph. Okay. Without it being bitter. Now wait okay. until you get to the onions. And what she the cheese is very mild. I and mean greer. it's nice. Yeah, that's yeah. a nice selection. That's good. It's it's not overpowering. Yeah. And then I think the sherry makes it. The sherry is <laughs> you know. But all the flavors are there. Now would you every once in a while while I was eating it, I would get a tiny hint of fish broth, but not really. I'm not getting it. No. No. In fact. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. If it gets if it gets the mama clam seal of approval. It's very good. Yeah. Now you guys know you should be believers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would give it a thumbs up and four stars. I meant I mean four out of five. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to aspire. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's delicious will all right you heard it there the verdict is in like i said you can do so much more with fish than you think don't throw away those heads don't throw away those collars use the whole fish be conscientious all right guys i'll see you on the next one you have to say your patented bye <laughs> oh, yeah. Bye and thank you. <laughs> <laughs>